So the broadcast of Remote ID will eventually need to be built into every drone by September of 2023 here in the US according to the FAA rules. If the drones don't have built-in Remote ID, they can use something called a add-on module. But right now, they don't even exist. Well, that's gonna change today because in my hand, I have the first Remote ID module that is approved by the FAA in the United States. We're gonna review it, see how it does. Let's go. Hey guys, thanks for stopping by. Really appreciate it. Have some awesome stuff lined up today. So let's just dig right into it. First of all, if you don't know what I'm talking about when I mention remote ID for drones, Maybe you're new to the industry or you've been under that nice comfortable rock for the last couple of years and been sheltered from what the industry is doing. It is a technology that's going to be required on all drones starting in fall of 2023. And if your drone does not have this remote ID module built in, you're going to either need to add a module or you can only fly in very specific areas called FRIAs. Now, I'm not going to go into the remote ID rule in detail. I've done that already in a video that I've interviewed with the FAA. And I think that does a really good job at explaining the remote ID rule and the different dates and different ways of complying with the rule. So if you're not sure about that, I'm gonna go ahead and drop that video up here. So feel free, uh, bookmark it, and then go take a look at that because I think it'll answer a lot of questions that you might have. So as I mentioned, today we're gonna to be talking about the remote ID module, which is an add-on module. And again, this is pretty cool because this is the first FAA approved road remote ID module available in the United States and I happen to have it right here in my hand. So this is called the Drone Tag Mini and was created by a company called Drone Tag and is available for purchase today. Now pricing and such we're going to talk about a little bit later when we go into some of the specs uh, so hang around for that. Now this module is not only available to the general public but it is also available in like an assembly form, electronic circuit board form, that can be sold to other drone manufacturers. So some of those manufacturers that maybe aren't up on the technology or don't have the remote ID figured out for themselves, I can see them purchasing a module or an electronic assembly and putting it into their drones, uh, at least initially, until they come up with their own. Now the one piece of the pie is that Drone Tech had to create this module and the technology to be able to transmit this remote ID broadcast. But of course, the second part is they needed to create an app that app then is what allows us to catch the data and actually see the drone in the sky. And there's two different types of apps. Now, there's two use cases really. One use case is gonna be maybe a commercial drone flight. Maybe I'm gonna go and do some inspections or do some commercial work. And I'm gonna log my flights and wanna see what's going on. I wanna go back later, find out where I did. Maybe I need to send that data to a customer for surveying or something like that. That app will be called the Drone Tag app. Now, that app will actually connect to a network via cellular, and that is built into this module as well. So some of those larger drones would connect to this, connect to the cellular network via LTE. And then, of course, all that data will be available on the network. So that means, of course, not only the data from our flight, but our location real time will be available on the network. Because it's cellular, that will be real time, and not only will we be able to see our location and our data, but we'll transmit that, everybody else can see it at the same time as well. And we can see everybody else's that's on this LTE network as well. Now that's pretty cool because we can look in our app and actually see drones or even any other aircraft that are transmitting remote ID. And we can then do some flight planning. So maybe there's a bunch in one area and we wanna make sure we avoid each other. This will allow real time planning, kinda of like the UTM, the unmanned traffic management that the FAA was talking about. Now, if you're not familiar with the UTM, I did, of course, do a video on that as well, and I theorized about how that might work, and boy, that seems like more of a reality now than ever. Now, the other use case is where I'm gonna fall in most of the time, or probably you will as well, and that is when you're doing recreational flights or non-commercial flights, and you wanna use broadcast remote ID, not the network kind, and that broadcast remote ID is going to be using Bluetooth and or Wi-Fi at the same time. Now this does both, there's a connection here for an antenna so that you can extend the range a little bit if you want, but that's gonna be more of a local broadcast. That uses a different app, which is called the Drone Scanner, which is a free app 
anybody's gonna be able to pick this up, download it off the web, then go scan the area, or if they see a drone, uh, turn it on and it will pop up on the screen. It will not only be able to see uh, this module, but it will be see any of them that are built in with this technology. So you'll be able to go ahead and view anybody that's in your proximity that you can pick up with Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. And before I forget, if you really wanna geek out on what standard that drone tag had to go through to follow to be approved by the FAA, I'll put that standard up here. And there's another one as well. Not only is this approved in the US, but it is approved in Europe as well using a different standard. Again, I'll put all that information up here, uh, links in the description so you can go look at that if you wanna see that. So I'm gonna attach this to the drone. We're gonna take off. I'm gonna have my VO start scanning and see what they can see. And then what we'll do is we'll come back once we're that far and we'll analyze that data just to see what the flight looked like. So let's go ahead, put this on the drone. We'll start the drone scanner and see what we can see. Get that started. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna fly around here, see if we can find the VO uh, that's out here. Uh, gonna do a little loop and uh, see if we can maybe go by the baseball fields first here for a little while, and then uh, see if when we finally get this data back uh, from our VO here with the drone scanner app, if they can actually see where we went and store that data. So we're gonna go ahead and make a little, make a little loop here. And we're 500 feet away, so I mean, I can see it. We're real clear up there, of course. We can see it now. So hopefully uh, my VO can see that. I'm not sure where my VO went. Uh, I'll go search in here in a little bit here. We'll go down here and see what we can see here. There we go. And there we are here. here. You can see the, uh, there's me here. Here we go. And you can see the uh, launch pad here, so you know where we are. So let's go see if we can search the uh, VO out now. And uh, uh, right there is our VO. Uh, so there, there we go. So there's the VO. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go up from there and take a little flight. One more trip maybe around the uh, baseball diamond here so you can see where we're going. See if uh, real time uh, the VO can actually see us going around that baseball field here. There we go. So I'm gonna take this time to break in here. And now that we have a little bit of understanding of what this drone scanner app looks like in combination with the drone tag module, I'm gonna go ahead and talk a little bit while this is going in the background. So you can see some of the things that I saw uh, while I analyzed this. Now remember, first of all, that this drone scanner app that's on the left-hand side over there, this is done by the VO. This is not by me at all. I can't see anything like this while I'm flying. To me, I'm just flying my drone. There's nobody around. I don't see anything. I don't hear anything. But somebody is tracking the flight of this drone. Not only the flight path, but you'll see here that this is the takeoff point or where I'm standing or the remote is unless I move. Now, of course, that's going to change in the future when they have the built-in remote ID. If you move, it will track the remote so it will move with you. In this case, it will only track the takeoff location. So if you happen to move, uh, the takeoff location won't be where you're standing at the moment if that's what you decide to do. So as I'm watching this, a few things came to mind here. First of all, look how it tracks the path of the drone while it's going. You can see the little red icon here that's showing the current location of the drone. Here in this area, you can see that this is where the drone took off from. So it does satisfy the requirements from the FAA that we're able to see those things. Now when the VO opens the data screen here in the app, we can see all kinds of real-time information. We can see velocity, we can see location, we can see GPS, we can see elevation, all those types of things. Now, one thing to keep in mind is I did notice some of these numbers were a little wonky. I think they're probably using elevation above sea level from what I can tell here, but it might be off just a little bit. Something that I should mention is the drone scanner app as we see it today is open source, which means that anybody can edit it. Drone tag decided to leave this open source, so it's gonna be kind of crowd programmed, if you will. And it's gonna evolve quickly. So any of these little quirks maybe that aren't as clear or we don't understand or something looks like maybe the value is just off, that's gonna evolve pretty quickly. Uh, the basics that we wanna take away from this test are we can see one, where the operator took off from, 
where the operator is likely standing, the path of the drone, the speed of the drone, the height of the drone, or the altitude. So does it meet the FAA's guidelines? Well, I think certainly it does. Now, one thing that surprised me a little bit, which I don't know if I like or not, I guess it depends upon your perspective, is that when I went down here to the bottom, I can take this flight data and export this as a CSV file. Now, what this does is it allows anybody to scan your drone, a regular Karen down the road, and capture all the data of your flight. And if it sees that the operator of remote location is in one place and your drone is maybe two miles away, it's gonna be pretty easy for the FAA or local law enforcement to identify, yeah, you were probably beyond the visual line of sight. So I recently had a discussion with family and friends and we were talking about BV loss and we're talking about maybe the gray areas, the FDA, and one of the comments was made of who's gonna know how they ever gonna find out, which is true up to this point. But this is how people are gonna find out. Now, if you're in the middle of your 50 acres and there's nobody else around, maybe there's no way anybody can know. However, if you're flying anywhere where there could be somebody else and somebody happens to know that there's a free app they can download, and they take this app, they open it up, they scan your drone, they see where you are, they see where the drone has gone, and they export this data and they file a complaint with somebody that maybe you're flying over their house, but you're a mile down the road. This is how they're gonna know, unfortunately. Now we've just had an incident happen within the last few days at a baseball game where the baseball game of Major League here had to stop because somebody somewhere outside the stadium flew a Mini 3 right down the middle of the stadium and hovered around, probably took video pictures or what have you, uh, stopped the entire game before it took off and flew away. Now in this situation, I'm not opposed to having a remote ID where somebody could scan that drone and find out where that operator is and be at his doorstep before that drone hits the landing pad in the front yard. Because incidents like these actually give all of us drone pilots a bad name. So of all the things I don't like about remote ID and I don't like that we can find a pilot's location, this is one instance where I think it's probably a good thing. Now, that being said, I still think this information should only be available to law enforcement or FAA only after requesting it because this data will be stored somewhere. I don't believe it should be available to the general public. I still think it's a really, really bad idea, but it is what it is for the moment. However, in this situation, it's not a bad thing to catch these people that give the rest of us a bad name. Now I'm considering doing an interview with Drone Tag, the company, because this is some pretty interesting technology and they've come a long way, obviously. And they also do things like this cellular, this remote network ID that we can keep private. So it's a, something that we can use uh, to our benefit if we want. And it would be interesting to hear their perspective on where they see this going, the improvements that they're going to do, different products are gonna come out with. Is it gonna be smaller? Uh, since they're so close uh, to this to the part of the industry, it might be really fun uh, to get their perspective and uh, see from a manufacturing perspective and a development perspective, maybe uh, what they can do or what they see on horizon. So you guys let me know in comments if that's something that you wanna do and maybe we'll set that up. So the one of the last things I wanna talk about is this module's price. And right now it is at about $300 US, which is pretty pricey. Anybody volunteering to uh, put this remote ID module on your drone is probably gonna pass, especially if they have a less expensive drone. Some of the drones aren't even that much. They're two, $300. So to spend $300 on a module is probably going to be cost inhibitive for a lot of folks. However, this is the first module that is approved by the FAA. So of course, brand new technology is going to be more expensive. And this module does have the cellular option in it, which of course I expect that maybe they're going to come out with an option that's going to be just Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, not have the cellular. So electronic wise, it will be more basic. They can probably make it cheaper as it goes on. And as more people perhaps purchase this module from drone tag, the quantity will go up. So hopefully the price will go down significantly. But of course that's something for the market to decide. So for now, I'm gonna leave the review on the drone tag module here. I just wanted to let you guys know that indeed the technology is here today and what it's capable of doing because it's only gonna get better and better from here. And very shortly, I am going to be doing some follow-up videos on remote ID and beyond visual line of sight. There's been some developments from the FAA with regard to enforcement and things like that. So I'm gonna be doing those videos shortly. So if you're not subscribed, 
you might want to click that subscribe button now because you don't want to miss this changes that are coming up in the industry. And lastly, of course, if you enjoyed the content or if you learned something you didn't know before, please hit that like button. It's free, I promise. Just lets us creators know we're doing something that's of value. So I really do appreciate it from me to you. So with that, thanks for stopping by. We'll see you in the next video.